have all had painful events in our lives that can lead to depression, anxiety, addiction, or broken relationships. But here's a secret. It is not about what happened to us that causes suffering. It's the stories we believe about ourselves. Join us as we shine light on how to rewrite our stories, avoid the shadows of shame, and travel along the pathway to joy, love, and connection. It's the Finding Peace Podcast with your host, Amazon best-selling author, Troy L. Love. I'm walking out of the gymnasium. It's Grandparents' Day, and I'm holding hands with my grandpa. He's just handed me a whorehound candy. He always had a whorehound candy in his pocket. I hated whorehound candy. He had handed it to me. I would lick off all the sugary covering on the outside, and as soon as I got to the bitter part, I would secretly take it out of my mouth and spit it out because I didn't want my grandpa to feel bad. Now this lunchroom that we're walking out of is the same lunchroom that when I was a kindergartner, they showed all of the student body the movie Watcher in the Woods. Watcher in the Woods was a Disney kids version of a scary movie. And I remember when I was a kid watching that show and being absolutely terrified. When I was five years old and I am in this auditorium and they're showing the movie, I screamed. I was terrified. And I ran out of the lunchroom and I went and hid in Mrs. Hansen's room because I was so scared. I was scared when Mrs. Hansen showed the video of Hansel and Gretel, and I saw them being shoved into the witch's house, and she was going to eat them, and I had to go to the other part of the room so I couldn't see the end of the movie. I was scared. It was that same lunchroom that, for whatever reason, somebody was dressed up as Darth Vader, and I didn't understand that when I was a little kid. I thought it was the real Darth Vader, and he was looking around the curtain out into the student body, and I saw him peek out, and I saw that it was Darth Vader, and I ran home as fast as I could because there was Darth Vader. Needless to say, as a child, I was very scared. I was scared of my shadow. I was scared of disapproving my teachers. I was scared of making my mom and dad mad at me. And so to have my grandpa holding my hand and walking through the halls of my elementary school was so comforting, even with the whorehound candy. It was a tradition that he and I had every year that I went to that elementary school for five years of my life Every year on Grandparents' Day, my grandpa would come, and he would always bring me the whorehound candy. It's funny, now that I've grown up, I've started to like the taste of whorehound candy, and I sometimes hand it to my kids, and they suck off the sugar, and then they totally spit it in the garbage too because they think it's gross. But it makes me remember just how much my grandpa, with his strong, gnarled hands, be with me, holding my hand. He had big, gnarled hands. He was a hunter. He was a fisherman. He was a hard worker. He was always working in his yard, doing something to fix up the house. And yet, he would take time out of his day to come be with me. In previous podcasts, I've talked a lot about the presence of my grandmother and how amazingly loving and kind she was for me. My grandpa and I didn't have as strong of a bond because he liked to do a lot of things that I wasn't interested in. He liked to hunt and fish, as I said, and I've told you before that I really don't like hunting and fishing. It was really boring to me. But he loved me enough to come and spend an hour with me to look at my art projects, to eat the school cafeteria lunch with probably the most amazing rolls that anybody's ever made on the place of the planet with whatever other food that they served that day, something special because it was Grandparents' Day. And it was just him and me for an hour. 
I didn't have to share him with cousins. I didn't have to share him with anybody. It was just him and me together. Recently, I wrote a new book called A Year of Self-Love. The entry for June 19th references an interview that the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh had with Oprah Winfrey. And he taught her the four mantras of true presence. And I love watching his video, and I'll probably put a link to it in the show notes so you can watch it. I don't mean to offend when I share this, but I love the way he talks. I love his accent. And he starts out each of the mantras with the word darling. And he says, darling, in his Asian accent, darling, I am here for you. Darling, I know you are there. Darling, I know you suffer. Darling, I suffer. I'm doing my best, but I need your help and understanding. As he's sharing this mantras, these four mantras with Oprah, he's talking about looking into the eyes of your partner and saying these things to them. Now, my grandpa didn't say, grandson, I'm here for you. Grandson, I know that you're there. Grandson, I know that you suffer. He didn't say any of that to me with words, but he said it with his presence. He said it because he was there. And his ability to show me that he was there with me has been one of the tender mercies, the tender moments that I remember growing up, having someone who was able to be there for me. Now, I'm sharing this with you because oftentimes it's beautiful. It's a beautiful experience when people can do that for us, when they can show up and be there for us. But there are times when we need to learn how to be able to do that for ourselves. And so I wonder what it would be like if you're having a really bad day and something challenging has just happened to you or you are having to face a hurdle and you imagine closing your eyes and using the same mantra for yourself. Darling, I'm here for you. Darling, I know you are there. I can see you. Darling, I know that you suffer. I can see the pain in your eyes. I can see the challenging heaviness that this is carrying for you. And darling, I suffer too. And I'm doing my best and I need your help and understanding. What would it be like to be able to have those conversations with ourselves, to, to acknowledge our sadness, to acknowledge our suffering, and then to remind ourselves that we're here for ourselves. When we can do that for ourselves, we are in a much better position to be able to do that for our loved ones. Now, I'm not sure what kind of challenges that my grandfather had. He was a pretty private man. I don't know exactly what some of his challenges were, but the fact that he's human indicates that he probably had challenges too. His message to me though was, Troy, I know you are there. Troy, I'm here with you. I see that you're suffering. I see that you're joyful. I see that you're happy. I see that you're excited. I'm feeling all of those feelings too. And I wanted to share them with you along with a piece of whorehound candy. So I want you to think about how you can show up a little better for yourself, how you can be present with yourself and be kind and compassionate. I also want you to reflect on who in your life has been able to do that for you and just consider the mantras that I read and see if they said those with their actions, that they're here, they know that you're there, they can see you, and they are experiencing the same emotions as you. And then practice gratitude about that gift. And then I want you to think about who in your life could use your presence? Who in your life could use you coming up and either with saying it or behaving it, conveying the same message of, darling, I know that you are there. 
Darling, I see you. I see that you're suffering. I see that you're experiencing an emotion of some kind, and I've experienced that emotion too, and I'm going to be with you right now. You've been listening to the Finding Peace Podcast. If we added value to your life, let us know or give us a rating. Before you go, subscribe to the show and get new episodes as soon as they are published. Thank you for spending part of your journey with us. And don't forget to grab your free copy of the Amazon best-selling book, The Art of Peace, by going to www.troyllove.com. Copyright Finding Peace Consulting.